Hey, good morning, everyone. Tracking Man 44 here. Hey, today's the first day we're going to uh, to begin the process of installing a whole new system. Everything's got it. The first order of business is going to be figuring the placement of the new air handler in relation to the Fire Chief wood furnace that I temporarily installed last year with just round pipe, which is a no-no. And also in relation to the offset or the outcropping in the concrete wall, plumbing pipes and things of that nature in order to get it going the direction that we need it to, to get going. Well, we have the discharge air plenum, just a basic plenum in place. That's right before it goes into a transition and damper assembly. If you remember this damper assembly, it's going to be clockwise to open and then counterclockwise to close. If I'm fortunate, I can use one actuator to do both sets of dampers. Now because these are not factory dampers, they're actually handmade, and sometimes when you install them in a piece of duct, there gets a little bit of a twist in them, so you have to make sure that before you cover them up, that they're still going to function the way you uh, want them to function. I've got it marked clockwise open, which means it's got to go to the left in order for it to open up. So there they go. They're working fine. Okay. You see the base wobbling because I've not secured the base yet down at the bottom. But the dampers are going to do what they need to do. Excellent. Oh, and another note that I didn't point out when I fabricated these dampers, I took and, and cut slots in the end of the shafts in the direction that the dampers are inside here. Say somebody's out here on a service call they, and something has failed, they have no idea what position the damper's in. You can't go by the angle of the handle because in this case, the angle of the handle is opposite to the direction that the dampers are. So we always mark by cutting a slice in the shafts the actual angle of the damper. But you can actually see the position of the dampers when you walk up and take a look at it. This is what my suppliers call a 587 top takeoff, meaning it's designed to come off the top of the trunk line, you know, and take off for a branch duct. And it's a six inch supply, but it's a seven inch round takeoff. So you gain that much more access to the, uh, the air pressure, the air volume that's inside the trunk line over just a straight six inch diameter 90 that's dovetailed and poked in there. So this measures, this cut size on this, I set my calipers for three and a half inches. Plenum T slipped right in on top of the uh, the damper assembly with that very first top takeoff out on the other side. Well, you can kind of see how that trunk line or the duct works going together, but you're probably wondering how you determine where to cut the holes for the, the branch ducts. Well, you know you've got your pipes coming out of the, the floors over here. You know, this is a demo, so those, those are already there. It's not new construction. You would be putting those in later, but now we have to go back to them. But we have the duct here already, and we have the branch duct here already. So what I'll do is I'll take my measuring device, and I'll hook it on the inside of that S right there, and then measure to the center. This in here is 12 inches. So if I put a tap 12 inches on center over on the far edge of the duct, that'll pick this one up here. Then the second one here is 41 and 1 half inches to center going that direction. So it'll be 41 and a half inches on center on the opposite side of the duct.
that gets it real nice and tight and minimizes the leakage around there. Now it's time to transition the supply air duct from 8x20 down to 8x16 and we're going to maintain evenness on the far side because if you look up ahead we have a very narrow window that we've got to take both supply and return through. Now these jobs are just a little more complicated. You've got to keep in mind everything that's got to happen in the future. And one of the things that we have on this particular job is the addition of a wood-fired furnace. Well, it's going to be tied into the ductwork being a furnace and not a stove. It's got its own blower, multi-speed blower. So we want to get the return air that goes to the electric furnace, also have it able to be attracted by the return, by the, uh, return air blower or the blower on the wood furnace. So we have to make provisions for extending that return trunk that is normally going to stop right here by the furnace and drop down because there's no more return air grills this direction. But we want to be able to transfer it over to there. So what we have to do is we have to pan this area right here so we can extend that trunk line down here. So when the electric furnace is on, it'll draw the return down and into the electric furnace. When the electric furnace is off, the negative pressure created by the blower on the wood furnace will draw it out of the ductwork up through the panning across and then down into the into the wood furnace. The reason I'm mentioning that now is we're ready to put the trunk line up going this direction in the house but we can't put the trunk line up until we get that panning up for the return air. So first things first. Now that the panning is in here above what the next section of trunk line goes uh, we can go ahead and put that up. Okay, with the short trunk line on the supply air side done to the, uh, to the far end of the house, ready to tie into the 6 inch branch ducts, and we've gotten this way up to the transition. Now it's time to go on north with the remnants of the, or the remaining portion of the supply air trunk over here to tie in all the registers for the, the north end. Well, we got a good start on it, but it's too much for just one video, so we'll be back with part two very shortly.